well, let's jump into this this amazing film uh, that that's your directorial debut. I, I still don't understand how you come out with, with this film. Um, the second movie was The Matrix. <laughs> Uh, on that little Apple uh, computer. Um, so, so with this film, Steve Jobs. <laughs> with, you, you mentioned that you know you, you had to tell the story, and it, you know you you you, you base it with these noir elements and things that you know it's crime and, and or ex con and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but but the importance of the story is is quirky and vibrant, you know, and 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 and, and you can see how well you wrote these characters. Um, what was it like? Trying to cast these characters. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I don't, I just I can't imagine it was easy. Nope. It was, uh, yeah, it was, God, it was crazy. At one point, we thought we had it all done. I mean, it just went on, and this actress and that actress, and we kept meeting them, we kept, people kept saying yes, and then we'd say that we wanted to do, you know, we wanted it to be sexual, and and um, this ends up being a theme throughout my career. <laughs> I don't know, I, just, I don't understand why we don't have more sex in our movies. I don't care, I don't care but it's like the most important thing almost in most of our lives, and we never see it depicted. It's like the craziest thing, I don't understand it. I, I'm like, we're not gonna <laughs> um, Why do people kill each other all the time? We don't see people make talk. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we would talk about sex, and then you know, people get but we had at one point, we had uh, uh, Rosanna Arquette and Jennifer Tilly, but they were the opposite. Jennifer Tilly was, wanted to be quirky because she was tired of being sexy characters. <laughs> and Rosanna Arquette who had wanted to be a sexy character because she had played lots of quirky characters. And they had said yes, and it was a done deal, and then something happened, and Roseanne suddenly fell out. And then right at that time was Showgirls was happening, and Dino got to see Showgirls, and he loved it. <laughs> Just to get an idea who Dino is. <laughs> and he, um, he comes back, and you know, he says, well, if you can get this girl, Gina, and so we went and met her, and at that point, we had, you know, Jennifer had already committed to Corky, but we, we couldn't quite, you know, we didn't think it worked the same way, and Gina, yeah, Gina, well, at first we, we read them, they were like, yeah, let's just meet and we'll try a little reading, and you could just tell that was not working. They were reading the opposite character. So Gina was reading Violet and Jennifer was reading Corky and it was just like, oh my. <laughs> and me and Lily were like, oh, this isn't working. And so we kind of had this like long conversation that took all, all afternoon and why we sort of felt they should play the opposite characters. And they both said no. And so then they went home and then we went home. And we got on a plane, and we're like, I guess that's over. That's sad. And then we were flying home to Chicago, and we were like, uh, what an extreme crush. Okay, I need a dream. And we landed, and somehow they had talked to each other, and they still wanted to do it, and so they decided to switch. And they decided it all on their own, and then we found out we landed, literally, and got a call saying, actually, they've switched, and now they want to do it. And we're like, what? Three back. <laughs> I'm the, back. The funny one was uh, Joey. Like, Dino hated Joey. Hated him. He was just like, he just kept saying, Joey Pentiliano is a character actor. He's not the leading man. And so that became Joey's, like, basically his calling card. He would just, like, walk into a meeting and say, Hi, I'm Joey Pantoliano. I'm a character director. I am not a leading man. <laughs> well, that, that, that's a great time because uh, we had these, uh, we had the audience fill out these questions, and we've got some great questions down. Thank you. One is exactly about, about Joey. Um, and 
The question is, is did you know you wanted to work with Joe again during the filming of Bath? And, and you know, continue you know, bringing it into your, to your, your, your films and your, your shows later. He is just, he's just such a character. I mean, he, he is like you imagine he would be, and he's really funny, and he's, he's sweet, and he's obnoxious, and he grates on your nerves, but you kind of love him. And, and he, uh, you know, he committed to the project with the energy that I, I think the movie just, he just gave so much energy to the movie. And, um, and we had a great, fun, weird, we have a weird relationship, and we had a, and we're just when we started working on the Matrix, we we're like, oh, you know, Joey, he'd probably be good for Slaver. And he's like, yeah, then we can kill him off again. Yeah. <laughs> and so it became a running joke, and like we would just be hiring Joey and murdering him, <laughs> like completing the love hate cycle in every film. He's so great. God, I can't stand him. Kill him. <laughs> He was okay with this? Yeah, he, it became a joke. It was like, <laughs> he was very, he loved it. He, he was just, <laughs> his first day of shooting was the day when, it, it was a tough, it was a tough experience. Like, our first, our, my first day, or our first day on the set was the, the lesbian bar scene. And, you know, I had been, making a lot of connections and you know I, I read a lot and I knew a lot of people in that community and I got to know Susie Bright and we'd become friends and she introduced me to a lot of friends and I was just like oh all these cool people we should just have them in the bar so all the community is sort of in the bar and that sort of helped us feel like more comfortable shooting it and we shot it it's all shot in LA she, um, we, even though I wanted to shoot it in Chicago, we couldn't afford to come here. And so we shot it in, in LA, but we were shooting a scene and you know, you're insecure. It's your first day, you're just naturally insecure. And then Dino has in his contract that he gets to look at all the dailies first. And so we're like, okay, cool, cool. So he looks at everything and he calls us in the morning of our second day and is like, you must reshoot the lesbian part. Like, oh God! What? What happened? What? What do we? What's wrong? What do we do wrong? Like, this is not a lesbian bar. Like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Actually, it kind of is actually. <laughs> like, no, these are not lesbians in there. Oh no, no, they, they really are. <laughs> it's not even acting. It wasn't like a casting call or anything. He's like, these are not lesbians! <laughs> and then he like sends me this casting book with all of these like supermodels in it. And he's like, these are lesbians! <laughs> I'm like, no, no. And he was like, you must reshoot it. And I was, and that was sort of really a, a really beginning of both me and Lily. We had a strong artistic conviction around our art, and we were just like, Fire us. And we sort of said, fire us on our second day. And he, he backed off, and then he came to the set the third day, which was Joey's first day, which was the set, the scene where he's tearing the apartment apart. <laughs> he's, man, he's like going nuts. And, and uh, Dino watches us direct, and we kind of direct, we were like, we, I think it was Mitch Williams, the Cubs pitcher, used to say, I pitch. I pitch like my hair is on fire. That's kind of how I direct. <laughs> but um, we're directing, and Joey is like crazy. And and at the end of like you know probably three hours of shooting, Dino just like walks away in disgust, and he's just like, they know what they want. <laughs> and that was kind of his sign off. And then he didn't talk to us again ever. Oh no. <laughs> That's right. He saw the sex scene, which is another good story. We can jump ahead to the sex story. That set was this crazy set because the camera it's on a it's on a it's on a big arm, and it comes up you know from the 
the truck we shoot, and then it goes into black, and then we put a cut in black, and we come up black, and it's built on a stage, the set, the quirky apartment is built on a big stage, so we could come up and go over the floor, and you see all the stuff on the, on the apartment, but we go all the way around and look back, right? So basically, there's a, a wall that's hinged open as we come up, and then we go all the way around, and everybody's like, so the whole point was that Gina and, Gina and Jennifer were like, well, it has to be a closed set. It has to be totally closed. No one is in there who is not essential personnel. And we're like, yes, definitely, 100% closed set. And then we started like, figuring out the mechanics of how we're gonna do it. And it's like, literally, we don't have enough crew people to run in and take all the stuff and the clothes and put and the lamp and get the thing out and go. And we go around and the sheets and the thing, and there's strings everywhere and people are pulling stuff and the camera goes around and the door has to close and the other door, the other wall has to open. And so we're pulling like all of the accountants. <laughs> we, have every, we have every driver on the, on the entire shoot is basically working on that one shot. It was hilarious. It was like, I wish we had an overhead of like this swarm of people. It's like so close and intimate. And it was like me yelling. I'm like, sheep, cow, pull, lamp, move. <laughs> so anyway, after Dino saw that, he said, the price of this movie has just gone up. <laughs> I love Dino, man. He was, I love him. Taught me so many things. Oh.